everybody, Dinosaur George from DinosaurGeorge.com answering the incredibly cool questions I get from all of you. Uh, let's kick it off. Lucas from St. Cloud, Florida writes, is Despletosaurus the first Tyrannosaur in North America. Despletosaurus, uh, Lucas, he was certainly in advance of Tyrannosaurus Rex, but I think I think there are two predators, predatory tyrannosaurs, two tyrannosaurs that were before him. Uh, Stokosaurus and who else? Dryptosaurus. Stokosaurus and Dryptosaurus. I believe those two tyrannosaurs preceded uh, uh, Despletosaurus. Uh, I'm almost certain. Stokosaurus, I believe, is the earliest, but Dryptosaurus was also early. In fact, uh, Dryptosaurus is a very rare dinosaur. They're both rare. If you want to see a cool website, go to Dryptosaurus.com. A very good friend of mine has created a website around Dryptosaurus, and he's doing some really good work trying to bring more attention to this incredibly cool dinosaur. So for you guys that uh, get a chance, go to Dryptosaurus dot com and to check out his site. It's, it's really kind of cool. Okay, Jay from Mandeville, Jamaica. Jay, how are you? It's good to hear from you again. Who would win in a fight between Spinosaurus or Tarchia? Um, Tarchia is an ankylosaur who is incredibly well armored and he's a heavy duty dinosaur. Spinosaurus, his teeth are not really designed to penetrate body armor at all. I believe if he bit into that back armor plating of, of Tarchia, I think Spinosaurus would break every tooth in his mouth. I don't think you can even compare the two. I think if, if uh, Spinosaurus were to see something like Tarchia, he'd probably go, that's kind of cool, but I have no interest in it. That's what I think would happen. I just don't think you could even, I, I don't think it would be even close. But man, wouldn't that be cool to see those two dinosaurs going at it? That would look pretty cool. Okay, my, uh, my buddy Wermo from Geneva, Switzerland. Always good to hear from you. He said, uh, hey, uh, George, thank you. You pronounced my name very well. Whew. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm really glad. He says, uh, is Carcharodontosaurus taller than Maposaurus? Uh, if I understand correctly, the estimates of Maposaurus are he's a little bit taller and a little bit longer than Carcharodontosaurus. Uh, but they are very similar dinosaurs. Carcharodontosaurus, Maposaurus, and Giganotosaurus are all very, very similar dinosaurs. And I've seen where some paleontologists have proposed they're all three the exact same dinosaur. Um, one of the difficulties in paleontology is that uh, when we find dinosaurs, we find variances among them, and sometimes we give names to dinosaurs that potentially have already been named by somebody else uh, because there's, there's similarities, but I mean, because there's dissimilarities, we think they are two different species, but it's kind of like cows. You can take a herd of cows and they all look different. They all have differences. Their horns may be different, but they're all the same species. If you dug up their skeletons, you wouldn't want to give 25 different members of the same herd 25 different names or 25 different species simply because of slight variances. Now, I'm not saying that's what's happened with uh, Carcharodontosaurus, Giganotosaurus, and Maposaurus. Um, Rudolfo Correa down in uh, uh, South America, he's the guy that found Maposaurus and Giganotosaurus. He knows his stuff. And if he says there's enough difference to justify two different species, I would be inclined to believe him. But um, uh, again, we do run into those problems sometimes. Uh, so yeah, I think Maposaurus is bigger all around than Carcharodontosaurus. Dawn from Converse, Texas says, how much does it cost for adults and children to come to my exhibit? Dawn, uh, my exhibit opens in San Antonio October 15th through November the 1st. Go to my website, dinosaurgeorge.com, click on the dinosaur exhibit page, and you'll see all the information for the event, where it is, uh, you'll be able to buy tickets online. I will tell you this. We've made this show incredibly affordable. I think it's $10 for adults and uh, $8 for kids, I believe, and school groups, it's less than that. Um, but I'll tell you, this exhibit is beyond belief. We've got over 25 life-size dinosaur skeletons, hundreds of skulls. You and your family will freak out when you go through this exhibit. And what's really cool is it's got really cool lighting and special effects. And uh, for the rest of you out there, if you're not in and around the San Antonio area, we plan on traveling all over North America with this exhibit. So Hopefully, we'll be coming to see you all soon. 
Okay, uh, Brianna from Temecula, California says, do you think the flying reptiles would scavenge like modern day vultures? Man, that's, that's a great question. That, that's cool. I love these kind of questions. Um, I think they would. Absolutely, I think they would. I think that they were uh, certainly predators. I think they would have made their life um, uh, catching fish and squid and little crabs and stuff along the shorelines and, and uh, they would have caught insects certainly. But I also think that they would take advantage of any food source. People ask me if there's an animal alive today that I could say would be similar to the pterosaurs and I always tell them, yes, yeah, seagulls. In my opinion, seagulls are the greatest representation. Now, of course, seagulls are birds and they're feathered and the flying reptiles were reptiles and they didn't have uh, feathers. But as far as behavior, seagulls, pelicans, all the ocean going birds, maybe even an albatross is maybe even a better idea because I think these pterosaurs could traverse tremendous distances by having such big wingspans and being able to glide. So uh, yeah, I bet you they would. And if you've ever been to the coast, you know a seagull will eat anything. It doesn't matter what. I mean, I've watched seagulls eat things that are like, what? Was that thing thinking? So uh, uh, yeah, I think they would have. Okay, uh, my buddy Mohammed from Tigard, Oregon says, hey DG, thanks for answering my question. It's my pleasure. He says, I hope that you come to Portland uh, sometime uh, soon. Um, uh, I'd love to go to Portland. I used to go up there and hunt for fossilized crabs uh, up in the Portland area. So I, I used to go up there quite a bit. He says he wants to know if mammoths were able to rear up on their hind legs like circus elephants. Good question, man. Good question. Uh, the answer is, yeah, they probably could, but they probably never would. Animals, we train animals to do things for our amusement that they don't normally do. It's incredibly painful for an elephant to stand up on its hind legs because it completely changes its center of gravity. It's not meant to do that. Its center of gravity is the middle of his body. And when it stands up, it shifts that center of gravity onto his hips. So when you take a three ton elephant, whose weight is distributed between all four legs and you force him to stand up, all of his weight is distributed to his left and his right hip. And that is incredibly painful. Those animals have no interest in doing that in nature. It's very rare that they would ever do it. And therefore, I don't believe mammoths would want to do it either. Either. And the other thing about mammoths is that they have that gi those gigantic tusks, which means their center of gravity would have been even more forward because of the weight of those tusks. So to get that animal to rear up would be like this. Let's say you get on your hands and knees and I put uh, five or 10 pounds on your head and then I tell you to raise yourself up with just using your back legs and not your front legs, stand upright. The amount of pressure it's gonna to take to move all that weight off of your front legs back to your hips is gonna be incredibly painful, probably break your neck. So don't try it. <laughs> but that just gives you an idea of, of what it would feel like for that animal to try to do that. And he also asks and says, could sauropods really hold their necks upright? There's a big debate going on right now about the sauropod dinosaurs. Could those dinosaurs keep their heads up in the air like a giraffe? Or did they keep them out in front of them like a gigantic vacuum cleaner that just kind of moved back and forth and ate all the vegetation? Some paleontologists believe that they could not raise their head up. Others believe they could. Here's my opinion. Brachiosaurus' body is designed to keep his head up. For him to walk around with his head down would be absurd because the way his body is designed, his head's already pointing up. Well, if he has the ability to do it, and he clearly does in my opinion, then all sauropods would have the ability. Maybe that wasn't the normal way for them to carry their head. Mementosaurus is a perfect example. He lived in a place where most of the vegetation grew to about the height of his neck while his neck was extended outward. So it doesn't make any sense for him to raise his head. The reason why people question it is because if they raise their head, the amount of pressure it would take to pump blood all the way up that head to the brain would be so huge that some paleontologists believe it would literally blow his head off. I always come back to, well, tell that to a giraffe because giraffes seem to survive perfectly fine pumping blood all the way up to their head. So in my opinion, yeah, I believe that sauropods had the ability to raise their head when they wanted. And in some cases, they didn't have the ability to lower their head to the ground because their body design just didn't allow it. All right, that's it for this time. Thank you guys so much for writing. Go to my website, dinosaurgeorge.com. Visit the Ask Dinosaur George page and write me your questions and I'll answer them if I can. Until then, take care of yourself, take care of the others around you, and for you young people, you practice those manners 
and you practice your reading and you're going to be successful. Till then, talk to you soon.